What about the people who they, they, they seem to be following their gifts and it leads them to do something that's part of the old story and contributing to harm in the world? Maybe their gifts lead them to be a banker, you know, or a, a petroleum engineer or something like that. So I believe that, so for one thing, part of the journey could be a stage of refining and developing your gifts. So the gifts that you might develop as you learn to be a banker or, or a petroleum engineer might end up being turned towards something else. And the only uh, training ground that was available to develop them was that profession. But I think that there's more to it than that. That there's two more things. One is that every institution that we have today has a has a has an evolutionary yearning inside of it. Um, it's not there are no monolithic institutions, and the changes that are happening within us and in the most radical organizations are also there even in the military. Like people in the military are going to transformational seminars, leadership. It goes under the the, the guise of leadership workshops and things like that. And they're doing the same kind of stuff that you're doing in your new age seminar at the whatever, you know, Esalen Institute or something like that. Like it's happening everywhere. So in, and it may be true that there is a, a glass ceiling on how radical you can be in um, an oil company or a chemical company or the military or something like that. Like eventually, the unfolding of your desire to serve comes up against the institutional imperatives of the institution that you're in. But isn't that true of all of us in the larger institution of this society? So part of it is um, trusting the guidance of that's placing us uh, in a certain environment. And if you do find yourself in the belly of the beast, you might and, and you're honest with yourself, you might notice that some things that you're doing do make you feel alive. They make you come alive. You want to get up in the morning and engage that. And other stuff is soul deadening. And they both exist in the same organization. And that if you really trust what makes me come alive, that same feeling that brought you in in the first place, and you are all psyched to... to uh, you know, develop new investment strategies for the investment bank or, or new fracking technologies or, or something like that. Continuing to follow that as you gather more information about the world, what had seemed exciting now might be appalling. And what, what makes you come alive might be to, to um, stand for some change in the organization. Who knows what your journey is supposed to be? But to answer the question, in short, no, I don't think that anybody has been put here on earth to, at this point in history, put here on earth to uh, bring fracking to more environments than ever before, put here on earth to uh, complete the extermination of the bluefin tuna. Like, no, nobody is here to do that. It's only when we are in denial of our purpose here that we are able to grit our teeth and do the things that don't really line up. Um, so I hope that doesn't oversimplify it. But when we train the muscle of listening to what makes me come alive, then a courage develops that makes it easier to step out of the same job that that you came into with such excitement. Like that can take a lot of courage to step out or to advocate for a change, risk your job. So part of it is just strengthening, <clears throat> strengthening the muscle of yes.